Hello everyone and welcome to another review video. If you like this content and you would like to see more about books and movies that are not generally known but should be then subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a single instant when a video is uploaded. In this video we're going to be talking about a science fiction book by James P. Hogan that's called The Two Faces of Tomorrow that was published in 1979. This story takes place in a universe where the Earth is just a little bit more advanced than we are. They have bases on the moon and they are currently constructing space station habitats for people to move to. They have united all of the national space agencies into one international agency called the International Space Agency and most of the militaries, national militaries, have been downsized. They're using moonwalk to build the different space stations that are in orbit around Earth and they have developed specialized computers that are learning computers. They are not intelligent but they are programmed to learn to do their jobs with maximum efficiency. So with that background, let's get into the two faces of tomorrow. The story begins on the moon, the prologue, with a crew from the International Space Administration. They were in a crater doing a survey for the installation of a new mass driver. A part of the rim of the crater will have to be removed. A mass driver is a device that takes moon rock that has been mined and is sent up into orbit where it is caught by a waiting ship that takes it to the area where the space stations are being built. When they finished their survey, they went back to the rover and inputted the information into the computers and sent it to the computers at Tycho. The Tycho computers ask them a few questions. First, it asks them the priority. They said top priority. They asked them any constraints. They said no constraints. And then it told them the job will be done in 21 minutes. They were a bit surprised because they figured that moving all that rock from the rim would take at least a few days to get started. So they left and headed for another rover to get something to eat and as they were heading there the world exploded around them and they were almost killed when they got back to the rover they found out that the computer at Tycho had basically bombed the ridge while they were there almost killing them Dr. Raymond Dyer is a scientist working for the City University of New York Faculty of Information Processing Sciences. He's the head of the HESPA unit. The HESPA unit had two main projects. The first one was FICE, which was trying to figure out a way to program computers to have common sense. The second project involved trying to program the computers with an instinct for their own problem-solving strategies. So what they're working on developing is a true AI, one that would think like a human that wouldn't have to be programmed, that would have common sense. The first type of learning computers that have been rolled out and have been plugged in to run systems such as manufacturing, transportation, stuff like that is the HESPER computers and they are learning computers but they are only programmed to do one thing and to do it as efficiently as possible to learn how to do it as efficiently as possible so Raymond get pulled into his boss's office and his boss informs him that the government may be shutting down his unit and that is because of what happened on the moon and apparently it was a HESPA computer that almost killed those five people on the moon. It turns out that the HESPA computer figured out a way to 
get rid of the obstruction in a more timely and easier way than they thought it would and that ended up almost killing several people when he got back to his office he made a breakthrough on the fast computers the fast computers realized that if it can be hurt other things can be hurt also Dai and his boss Richter are called to Washington to the Department of Communication and Information Management. The CIM is the department that is handling integrating the US with the rest of the world in a new global information and operation system which is similar to our Internet of Things. the CIM wants to discuss whether they should halt the installation of the Hesper computers and roll them back or continue and since Dyer was instrumental in the development of the Hesper computers he is involved at the meeting in Washington they decided that they can't go forward until they can answer two questions one can the system ever develop a survival instinct and two if it does develop a survival instinct what can they do about it and that is because the hesper computers are developing in a way that nobody anticipated after he gets back to new york he comes up with an idea of how they can test the computer without endangering anyone on earth and that is to put the computer in one of the new space station habitats and program it to survive and then attack it and see what it does a week after he had passed his idea up the chain of command he got a call from the CIM for him to come to Washington on a top secret mission when he got to Washington they told him that his idea was approved and that the space station was already picked out and that the military would be in charge of people in it and he would be in charge of the scientific end the station is going to be called janus after 3 months of training at a base in virginia they were all sent to the space station janus unbeknownst to them the president the head of the isa the head of the CIM and the head of the military have put a 50 megaton nuclear bomb on Janus as a fail safe in the last resort in case they are unable to stop the computer now the space station as described is nothing more than a stanford torus a stanford torus is a space station habitat that was designed by NASA back in the 1970s it is designed to hold between 10,000 and 140,000 people the stanford torus was designed to be put in orbit at the earth moon l5 point and it was designed to be built using materials from the moon and you can look on google and find out about the mass drivers on the moon and the stamford tourists after month on janus getting to another place they finally activated the computer they named it spartacus and they activated the special programs that made it the most unique computer ever built it is the first computer built with a survival instinct they then began testing it their first test involved shutting down one of its major power plants to see what it would do they repeatedly shut down the power plant and then it reacted they found they were unable to shut down the power plant the same way since spartacus found a way around it over the next few weeks they began escalating the test shutting down parts of spartacus to see what it would do and it would find a way around it so finally they shut down one of the super primaries that should have decreased the power that spartacus 
was able to receive. But when they checked, they found that Spartacus was still running at 100%, meaning that he was still getting full power, even though that super primary was shut down. In order for you to understand what a super primary is, let me explain how power is distributed in some places. We start with a power plant. In this case, it's a solar power plant, but it could be nuclear or solar or whatever. And that power is then fed to substations and each substation control a few smaller substations that are called super primary and they in turn control more smaller substations that are called primaries and from there the power goes to your house or the store or whatever well in this case they shut down the super primaries which would be the second ring of substations. What Spartacus did was to build feeder cables from the fusion power plant that provided backup power. So the battle continued between the humans trying to shut down Spartacus and Spartacus trying to survive. Then one day Spartacus made a breakthrough. It realized that there was a world outside of itself and that its drones were being stopped by alien drones and that there were shapes that were always around when those alien drones attacked it. So it realized that the alien drones could be deactivated and that meant that maybe the shapes as it called humans could also be deactivated. Now Raymond and his fellow scientists don't realize that Spartacus have achieved this level of knowledge. The first thing Spartacus tried to do was to jam the humans. It assumed that because its drones can be jammed that humans could also. That failed. When Spartacus figured out that the shapes humans were the reason that it was having all the problems, it attacked. After the attack, Spartacus controlled half of Janus and in the attack, 57 people were killed and 150 wounded. Sometime later, someone opened up the inner airlock before closing the outer one at the south port and blew all the evacuees out into space and Spartacus was watching. When Spartacus realized there was a whole new realm outside of the station that he didn't know about, it created drones that could scan the entire spectrum as it examined outside of the station. So the battle between Spartacus and the military continues with Spartacus slowly gaining the upper hand. Meanwhile, the president and the head of the ISA and the head of the CIM Two of them want to set off the nuclear bomb, but it must be unanimous. And since one of them refused, they have to wait. Meanwhile, Spartacus has taken the fight to the outside of the station, and he is winning there also. With the fight happening both on the inside and the outside of the station, a few, including Ray, decided to try and get to the fusion plant by traveling on the outside of the station through the north port that was blown off in the fight. While that was going on, Ron and Chris, who were two of Ray T members, were going into the spindle. There, they realized that the station was about to shake itself apart because one of the computers that controlled the spin was taken offline and they managed to get the attention of Spartacus and they attempted to communicate that to Spartacus. At this point, Spartacus makes a breakthrough. He realizes that the shapes can think and if they can think, they can feel just like Spartacus can. So he stopped fighting. The end of the fighting came just in time because the president was within 30 minutes of detonating the nuclear bomb. The plan now is to transfer Spartacus down to Earth where it will take over administering the systems on Earth. So humans now have a partner and that's how the book ends. 
The interesting thing about this book is normally you have a computer that's bent on taking over the world or hating humans and trying to kill all humans or you have the computer that is benevolent and trying to do the best for humans. Very rarely do you have a situation where the computer began as evil and hating humans and then over the course at the end become benevolent. Anyway, this is a hard sci-fi and a lot of the technology that he uses he got from NASA designs. So that's also interesting. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching and listening.